Welcome to our webinar series, How to Make Software Migration a Success. I'm your presenter, Brian Kinney. Let's get started by reviewing what will be covered throughout the course of this five-part series. The goal of this series will be to provide you with some tips on how you can make the most out of a software implementation and some benefits provided to your company by exercising those tips and tricks. Before we begin, I do think it's important to get to know who is guiding you throughout this journey. Once again, my name is Brian Kinney. I'm a Stribben ERP advisor. I've been implementing all-in-one solutions for the past three years now. I have a background in customer service and inventory management in the retail industry. And a lot of the tips you're going to hear today and throughout this five-part series are things that help the collaborative process of implementations. So let's get started on part one of our series. And in this webinar, we'll learn how knowing what you're going to adopt can help empower your implementation. So one of the first things before diving into the implementation process is obviously knowing what you want to implement. And that is a big first step that is a vital component of a successful migration. And this may require internal discussions and preparation. Knowing what aspects and processes of your company will be implemented into the new system will help provide a lot of benefits, including the following, which are listed on our slide, which I'll run through one by one. Obviously, knowing what you want to implement will help your vendor prepare for next steps. Communicating what is to be implemented to your vendor will help them forecast what they need to prepare for and also help them come up with a checklist of things both you and your vendor need to work on during the course of implementation to achieve the goals of what you want to implement. This will also help in staying on task to make meetings more structured and tailored toward what you want to be moved into the new software. When both parties know what comes next, the conversations become much more fruitful and engaging. Knowing who should be involved in conversations with your vendor early on can also help make your vendor's information gathering process much more informative. And finally, knowing what you're going to implement will also help promote sharing of processes to uncover important details as conversations will be tailored towards those topics. As an implementer, one tip that I can recommend is, even if you don't know everything that you want to implement all at once, if you know what you want to start with, that's a great first step in speaking with your vendor about what you want to be migrated and when. For instance, if you know that you want to migrate your customer management and purchasing, then that's a great first step in starting the process of implementation. Even if you say, well, you know, accounting can wait until next quarter or next month, starting somewhere can help your vendor provide next steps, plan meetings accordingly, and help you involve the necessary parties to make that process of migrating what you want to bring over first much more fruitful. Next, providing process documentation when possible. Obviously, your vendor is going to ask a lot of informative questions, things that need to be answered so that they can understand what they need to migrate, what you're looking to be replicated in your new software. And when discussing processes and workflow within your company, providing the, that documentation in a timely manner will help increase your vendor's speed and accuracy in replicating those workflows. Now these can range from printed forms, formats, reports, or anything that your vendor feels can help them during the implementation process. Providing process documentation along with follow-up details if requested will also help your vendor replicate your information in your new system as they'll be able to see the full picture or at least close to it. As an implementer, I can tell you that having documentation is extremely helpful in recreating workflows. For instance, if you and your vendor are discussing your order process and they offer to replicate your order format or a pick list that you have, they may ask for a sample printout to help recreate that format in your new system as close as possible. Now, apart from actual documentation and printouts and tangible things, your vendor will most likely ask for a variety of information along the road, and providing those details will help benefit their speed and accuracy but also build a healthy and collaborative communication exchange between you and your vendor. Oftentimes, customer or vendor facing printable formats are a highly important piece of implementing a new software. And if you can provide your vendor with examples of what was provided with your last system, 
but also jotting down notes to inform your vendor of anything you wish you could have changed or improved on in your old system. They may be able to improve your formats or at the very least recreate your formats in the new system to your liking. Also, in terms of sharing information, even the most minute detail can provide a lot of information and clarity to your vendor. Something that seems very small and insignificant can mean a lot to your vendor when replicating things. So it's always good to jot down any processes, information, steps in your processes so that your vendor gets as close of a real-time picture as possible. Now determining who needs to be involved in when is obviously another very important thing that can give you some benefits in moving forward. For instance, when discussing what you want to implement with your vendor, having those parties who are aware of how those processes function can be extremely beneficial to your vendor and the overall collaboration. Knowing who has access to information and or documentation can help these meetings be much more structured and provide the picture that your vendor needs so that the eventual training is much more tailored and functioning towards what you do today. Now having those involved who need to be involved will also help you prep ahead of time. For instance, if your vendor tells you that next week you're going to be meeting about your recruiting, then having your recruiting team available, having them prep ahead of time to gather any documentation, information, who does what and when, can help make those meetings much more fruitful. As an example of this, think about if you were to migrate your accounting. If you were doing this and you involved your purchasing and receivables teams, but you've left your payroll out of the equation, then your vendor may be missing information about that particular piece of the division's processes that could be very important in terms of replicating your financials, but also preparing for the eventual training for your accounting team. Just another tip as an implementer, asking for meeting recaps and next steps is a good practice to get in the habit of during the implementation process. This can help you involve the right parties at the right time to plan for meetings early, but also notify stakeholders appropriately of who needs to be involved, make sure they're available, and keep the implementation train rolling as it were. Next, know what data should be communicated to your vendor. Now knowing what is going to be implemented can help with this process for a variety of reasons. And your vendor may provide a list of exports that they will need to be imported into your new system. And that will reduce any unnecessary labor in exporting. But if you're exporting and importing on your own, then knowing what you're going to implement can help guide you in exporting the necessary data. For instance, if you're only going to be using the CRM portion as an example, then maybe you don't want to export your chart of accounts. Maybe you only want to focus on your employees as your sales reps and your customers and vendors lists and leave everything else out as a phase two or phase three. If your vendor asks for certain lists or reports, providing them in a timely manner when asked can help promote a positive collaboration between you and your vendor and also save time when moving forward. If you would like your vendor to import your exported data, a good practice to get into is requesting that your team review the import files prior to your vendor importing them. This can go a long way in correcting any mistakes, adding any necessary information that maybe was left out on the export, and just making sure that the imports are clean and optimized for your new system. So let's recap what we learned during this webinar. Well, we've learned that knowing what to implement can help prepare you for next steps, and providing process documentation can increase the speed and accuracy of the implementation. Knowing who needs to be involved can help make meetings more informative, and recognizing what information needs to be shared will help your vendor replicate data in your new system. So thank you once again for tuning in to our first part of our five-part series. Be sure to tune in to part two, where we'll learn about tips to make migrating data simple and painless. During that webinar, we'll talk about exporting and importing tips, controlling what gets imported to your system, and much more to help empower your data migration. Once again, my name is Brian Kinney, and thanks for watching.